My sister sternly announced, We no longer need you here. Please leave the place where you work from home, you're just living off us, with a tone that signaled she was done discussing it. My parents joined in, singing the same tune in unison, Get out. We're tired of you and your dog always being in the way. If that's how you feel, I'll just do what I want, I replied, my mind already plotting my next steps. Let me introduce myself. I'm Lisa, a 41-year-old single woman working as a freelance web designer. I can do my job from anywhere, thanks to the internet and my home setup. I have my own space to work in, and I enjoy the freedom of managing my own time. Despite loving my job, my life was disrupted five years ago, when my parents suddenly decided to visit me without notice. As soon as they walked into my house, they began to look around, and soon started a conversation that hinted at major changes ahead. This house is quite spacious, Lisa, my mother observed, looking around. It almost seems like we could live here too. And there's even a spare room, my father added. It seems a waste for Lisa to live in such a big house all by herself. Without asking me, my parents had made up their minds in their typical manner, they seemed to think moving in with me was settled without even considering what I might want. I had never planned to live with them, and I made my position very clear. Hold on a moment, I have no desire to live with you, I said, puzzled by their assumption. What are you even suggesting? My father's face flushed red with anger as he sharply retorted, You've taken over this house, claiming it was from your uncle Michael, and you're trying to claim it as your own. There's a limit to how low you can go. I tried to set the record straight. I didn't take it over. I had a proper discussion with Uncle Michael, and he willingly transferred it to me, I explained. Despite my protests, my parents had already decided to move in. They insisted, Our old house is falling apart, and it's no longer suitable for us to live there. Given that my mother didn't work and my father's income wasn't enough to cover major repairs, they saw no other option but to move into the house I had inherited from my Uncle Michael. Faced with their difficult situation, I couldn't just leave them homeless, so I reluctantly agreed to let them move in. Once they settled in, however, they didn't hesitate to make sarcastic remarks. Hey Lisa, you're already in your 40s, aren't you? Don't you have any plans of getting married? They would taunt, always pointing out my single status. I find great satisfaction in my work and am truly content with my life. Yet the people around me often express concerns about my relationship prospects. They suggest that I should follow in my sister's footsteps, who has taken a different path in life. Contrary to their expectations, my sister's married life has faced its own challenges. Nevertheless, I remain unfazed, reassuring them that I'm perfectly fine with how things are. It was during one such discussion that my mother, who had been eavesdropping, decided to butt in. Hey, don't speak ill of your sister like that. Unlike you, she's married and even has a stable job at a company, she interrupted. Defending my own choices, I replied, I might not be married, but I am doing a respectable job too. My mother wasn't convinced and continued her criticisms. You're always just messing around on your computer. You're probably making money through some shady means, aren't you? She accused. Despite their doubts and criticism, I continued to live my life according to my own terms, valuing my independence and the career I've built. I quickly responded, Shady, I'm earning my living honestly through legitimate work. There's no need to worry. My mother was not pleased with my reply and scolded me sharply. How dare you talk back to your mother? you really are the complete opposite of your sister. This constant comparison of me to my sister by our parents was something I had become used to. While my sister worked a temporary office job, I had chosen a different path that allowed me to work from home. Although I knew our parents' generation might not fully understand the concept of remote work, it still hurt to be consistently belittled. However, one day while I was preparing dinner, instead of my perpetually idle parents, the doorbell rang unexpectedly. To my surprise, it was my sister Carol, burdened with a massive amount of luggage. 
Hub, Carol, what's going on? It's been a while, I greeted her, taken aback by her sudden appearance. This is sudden, but I'll be living in this house from today, Carol replied with urgency. Baffled, I blurted out, living here from today? I didn't hear anything about this. Carol explained, didn't mom and dad tell you, I got divorced, so I'll be counting on you from today. Despite my initial shock, I tried to maintain a welcoming demeanor. Ignoring my startled reaction, Carol trudged upstairs and promptly claimed an empty room as her own. My parents sided with her and I found myself powerless to object. From that moment on, my stress levels began to rise. Carol, after her divorce, had quit her job and spent her days speaking ill of me with our mother. Hey mom, isn't this dress cute? Carol would ask, showing off her latest shopping find. Oh yes indeed, Carol. You're so pretty, it will definitely suit you, our mother would respond enthusiastically. Then Carol would turn to me and remark, Do you think so too? It's totally not something Lisa would wear, right? Unable to escape their critical gaze, I continued to live my life without reacting to their taunts. Despite the desire to retaliate, I realized that it would only play into their hands. So I remained steadfast and unresponsive to their attempts to provoke me. One fine day, I knew I had to stay strong and keep focusing on my own happiness, regardless of the negativity around me. I found myself in a truly heartwarming situation when one of my closest friends became the proud owner of a litter of four adorable puppies. This significant event sparked a series of changes that would enrich my life tremendously. The moment I saw those precious pups, I felt a deep connection. After careful thought, I decided to adopt a little black chihuahua from the litter. I named him Charlie. Charlie was a bundle of joy, his round eyes sparkling with mischief. Every time he looked at me, his tail wagged so vigorously, it seemed it might just detach in his excitement. I had always dreamed of owning a chihuahua since I was a child and finally having Charlie by my side brought immense happiness into my life. This was particularly true because I often worked from home, and Charlie's companionship provided a much-needed relief from the loneliness of my remote work days. From today onwards, you're Charlie, okay? Woof, I declared to him, solidifying our bond. Caught up in my excitement, I didn't discuss my decision to bring Charlie home with my family. After all, it was my house, and I was fully responsible for all the expenses related to Charlie's care and well-being. I saw no reason for them to object. However, as soon as I introduced Charlie to my family, my parents and my sister Carol began voicing their concerns. They expressed their displeasure, upset that they hadn't been informed about my intention to get a dog. Some even mentioned their dislike for the potential odors that dogs could bring into a home. My parents and Carol were quite vocal in their disapproval, I recalled. Hey, we didn't hear anything about you getting a dog, they protested. Dogs smell, don't they? I hate odors, someone added. Lisa, how could you just bring a dog home without consulting us? They continued to scold me. Despite their complaints, I stood my ground and firmly defended my decision. It's my house, and I decided that Charlie and I needed each other. His presence here is a source of joy, not a cause for complaints, I asserted. I was prepared to show them that Charlie's presence was a blessing, hoping they would soon see him as I did. I explained to them that Charlie wasn't some random street dog, he was a gift from a friend. I also emphasized that I was the one covering all the expenses for Charlie's care and maintenance, so they really had no grounds to complain. What I choose to keep in my house is my business, I added firmly. If you have any complaints, you're free to leave. Initially, their annoyance was clear they were visibly frustrated and upset. However, within just a few hours, a miraculous change occurred. Charlie's undeniable cuteness completely won them over. They couldn't stop doting on him, playfully asking, aren't you cute? Are you mummies, daddies, or are you sissies? Look over here, sweetheart. It was as though their frustration had just evaporated into thin air. 
My entire family had fallen head over heels in love with Charlie, and his presence managed to bring about a remarkable transformation in their attitudes. From that point on, our home was filled with constant adoration for Charlie. Thanks to him, the previous hostility directed towards me began to fade, and I was able to enjoy relatively calm and harmonious days with my family. However, as life tends to go, a disruptive event occurred one day that broke the peace we had come to enjoy. While I was out running an errand, I received an urgent call from my sister, Carol. She sounded agitated and demanded, come back home now. Startled by her urgent shout, I asked her what had happened. She unleashed her frustration over the phone, shouting back, it's not what happened, it's what Charlie did he did his business on my clothes. What if they smell? I tried to calm her down, saying, oh, just wash them quickly and they'll be fine. And isn't it your fault for leaving your clothes all over the floor? Carol retorted, what, it's my fault? It's your poor training that's to blame. I sighed, realizing that this was just a minor hiccup. Enough, Carol, Charlie is still a puppy, you know. If you take him out for a walk, he won't do his business at home. You said you were excited to walk Charlie today, didn't you? Did you actually take him? I had originally planned to take Charlie for a walk later in the day, but I didn't realize this decision would trigger a series of events that would throw my family into chaos. The core issue was that I hadn't fully trained Charlie, our beloved dog, and the consequences of this oversight were about to unravel. When I returned home, I walked into a home filled with tension. My sister Carol, clearly furious, confronted me immediately. Her anger was evident, and it was clear she had already briefed our parents about the mishap, as they too glared at me, standing amid Carol's now-soiled clothes scattered across the floor. Carol, distraught, threw the soiled garments at me in a fit of frustration. I'm going to charge you for the cleaning costs, she declared angrily. Why should I pay? I retorted. It's because you didn't take him for a walk and left your clothes all over the floor. My parents quickly joined in, urging me to take responsibility. Lisa, shouldn't you at least apologize to Carol? They suggested. All of this happened because of that Charlie you brought home. As the accusations continued, I couldn't help but defend Charlie. Can't we give Charlie some slack? Puppies are like babies. They make mistakes sometimes but my family seemed determined to blame me and Charlie. This situation only happened because of this stupid dog, my sister snapped again. Lisa, you made the right choice by not getting married if you became a mother. I doubt you'd raise a decent child. Her comments grew harsher and my frustration mounted. How dare you say something like that? I exclaimed. If you had taken him for walks properly and kept the house tidy, none of this would have happened. Finally, my sister reached her limit. She pointed at me and declared, I can't take this anymore. The situation had escalated beyond simple pet mishaps to personal attacks, revealing deeper family tensions. Despite the hostility, I knew it was essential to remain calm and address each issue thoughtfully, prioritizing Charlie's training and our family's need for better communication and understanding. I don't need you or this dumb dog. Get out of this house. The words struck me like a ton of bricks. What? I stammered in disbelief. Didn't you hear me? I said get out. We don't need a home-wrecking freeloader here, my sister continued harshly. Her accusation cut deeply, especially since she knew all too well that I was currently without a job. I was stunned. Who did they think was covering the household expenses? It was me. As I stood there, Bewildered by my sister's outrageous claims, even my parents joined in, supporting her view. That's right, Lisa, leave this house. Your presence only makes us feel worse, they echoed. I had reached my breaking point. You're all jinxes, just get out, they shouted together, their voices echoing off the walls. That's it. I've reached my limit. I finally burst out. If this is how it's going to be, just wait. With that declaration, I decided to take control of the situation. I quickly packed my belongings and left the house with Charlie wrapped in a towel. 
As I walked away, thoughts of revenge flickered through my mind, but I knew this saga was far from over. A few days later, as expected, my sister reached out to me in a panic. Lisa, help! What happened to the house all of a sudden? She asked, her voice filled with anxiety and desperation. Curious about this new twist in our ongoing family drama, I inquired, what happened? Why do we suddenly have to leave? We were told to leave by the end of this month, she replied, her voice trembling with stress. The realization hit me hard, and I couldn't help but wonder if this was the universe's way of teaching my family a lesson about compassion and understanding. Ah, so what's the problem here? Why do we suddenly have to leave? Carol's voice quivered as she struggled to grasp the situation. I've made the decision to sell the house, I told her firmly. I stated calmly and Carol froze, disbelief clear in her trembling voice. What do you mean you've decided to sell it? You don't have the authority, she stammered. A month ago, the house officially became mine, a fact I had kept to myself until now, I explained. Yes, I received the house from Uncle Michael, and the title is in my name, I revealed, causing Carol to react with shock. You're kidding, right? Her skepticism was evident. Even if the title was transferred to you by Uncle Michael, you can't just sell it like that, she argued. I understand your concern, I reassured her, but right after you told me to leave, I consulted with Uncle Michael. He made it clear that the house is my now Lisa. He told me to do what I want and suggested I get away from the family as soon as possible. Carol was taken aback, struggling to process this unexpected revelation. What? No way, she muttered. As our conversation continued, I suspected my parents might be listening in through the phone speaker. Soon enough, they began to voice their objections. Hey, Lisa, cut it out. We have no other place to live if we leave the house, they interjected, trying to appeal to my sense of family loyalty. That's right, Lisa. It's unthinkable to do this to your own family. If you're a good daughter, show some respect to your parents, they added. With a quiet but firm tone, I responded, Respect? What are you talking about? You've always looked down on me compared to Carol. Who do you think has been supporting your life for the past few years? You all had nowhere to live, so I reluctantly let you stay with me. My parents were momentarily silenced by my strong response. Without waiting for their reply, I contemplated the implications of my decision, ready to enforce the boundaries that were long overdue. I continued, who treated me and Charlie like nuisances and kicked us out? It was you, wasn't it? Trying to drive out the original resident is shameless. My father, his voice full of plea, responded, Please, Lisa, help us. We're sorry. But I had had enough. I don't care. Fend for yourselves, I said resolutely. With that, I abruptly ended the call and blocked all my family members' contacts. Charlie, my loyal canine companion, looked up at me with a worried expression. I held him close and whispered, I'm sorry, Charlie, for shouting. It's all right now. I will protect you. I felt relieved that I had rescued Charlie from a family that had mistreated him. In the days that followed, I learned that my parents and sister had been forced to leave the house at the last minute despite their desperate attempts to cling to it. My father's meager income and my unemployed mother and sister made it impossible for them to maintain a decent life. Rumors circulated that my sister was constantly pressured by my parents to find a job, and their family relationships deteriorated further each day. While I had no interest in their living conditions, it was clear that their standard of living had plummeted since my departure. It was a classic case of reaping what they had sown, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of vindication. Meanwhile, I enjoyed a fulfilling life in my new pet-friendly apartment, free to work on my terms without anyone complaining. All my earnings were solely for myself and Charlie. I was genuinely content with my life. Charlie, let's go to the dog park today, I said with a smile. Charlie seemed livelier, perhaps because that noisy family was no longer a part of our lives. From that day forward, 
I was determined to protect Charlie for the rest of our lives and lead a peaceful and happy existence.